Hello, my name is Ben Bonch, and I'm the business manager for Lightning Local 1776. We're here to protect your rights, pay, and benefits as employees of the United States government. The first and most important right you have as a federal employee is the right to be represented by the union during an investigatory interview. This is also known as the Weingarten right, and it applies to you regardless of whether you're a dues paying member of the union or not. In the same way that it's always important to have a lawyer present whenever you're being questioned by law enforcement, it's equally as important to make sure you have a union representative present anytime you're being questioned by someone in your National Guard chain of command. If you find yourself involved in an investigation, regardless of whether you're a target or just a witness, we highly recommend you invoke your Weingartner right before you answer any questions. Now, once you invoke your Weingartner right, the National Guard has to do one of three things. One, they can stop questioning you until a union representative is present at the meeting. Two, they can cancel the interview and complete the investigation without your statement. Or three, they can inform you that they're going to call off the interview unless you voluntarily agree to waive your Weingartner right. We highly advise you never to accept option three. As a federal employee, you have the right to access all information the National Guard keeps about you. That includes access to MyBiz, which is the web-based personnel records database, your employee folder, which is maintained by your immediate supervisor, and any other files, such as medical records, as they pertain to your civilian employment. Now, all requests to review personnel files should be submitted to your immediate supervisor and should be accomplished during work hours, as long as that review does not interfere with your assigned duties. All federal employees have a right to conduct their private lives as they see fit, as long as those activities do not violate federal law or National Guard regulations. Now, this includes your ability to decide how and where you invest your money, who you donate money to, what social activities or club you want to join or take part in, and whether you want to take a part-time job after duty hours. Now, there are certain limitations to the above that involve what's called the standards of ethical conduct for U.S. government employees. For example, you cannot knowingly or willingly participate in activities that are illegal. You also cannot affiliate with organizations that are considered hate groups or that advocate for the overthrow of the United States government. And as far as part-time employment goes, you cannot accept a job that would be deemed a conflict of interest or that would interfere with your duties as a federal employee. Your right to privacy doesn't just apply outside of work. While the National Guard has a lot of latitude to conduct searches of both personal and government property, there are some conditions that apply. For example, any search of your personal property at work should be justified. The National Guard cannot just open your locker or backpack, for example, and search it without providing you some reason or justification. And that search should be conducted by someone who has the authority to conduct searches. Also, any search of personal property should normally be conducted in your presence as long as your presence does not interfere with the investigation. Unlike the military, there is no chain of command when it comes to raising matters of concern or filing complaints as a federal employee. Federal law guarantees you the right to bring matters of personal concern directly to either the union or other appropriate government officials, including members of Congress, law enforcement, or other government agencies with oversight. Federal law also protects you from reprisal or retaliation should you decide to raise a matter of concern or file a complaint. The law says that you cannot be disciplined or discriminated against for filing a formal complaint or grievance for disclosing fraud, waste, and abuse, or for providing testimony against your employer. Finally, you have the right to work in a safe environment, free from physical threats or violence, and with access to all necessary tools, clothing, and safety equipment needed to perform your job. You also have the right to be treated with respect, common courtesy, and consideration. While most of you are or have been in the military, and most of the folks in charge are either military officers or NCOs, it's important to remember that during the work week, you are a federal civilian employee, not a member of the military, even if you wear the military uniform to work every day. Your supervisors have a duty to treat you like a civilian, not a basic trainee. This extends to disciplinary actions, and any type of disciplinary action that's taken against you as a civilian has to be done privately, which means that you cannot be required to make a public statement or disclosure regarding any matter concerning disciplinary actions taken against you. Now, some employees are under the impression that the union has to represent you regardless of whether you're a dues-paying member or not. This is not true. The union is only obligated to represent all employees in four very specific situations. Those are one, contract negotiations, two, grievance and arbitration, three, wine gardener investigations, and four, formal meetings and discussions. Outside of these four situations, the union has the right to require membership in exchange for representation. If you have any questions about becoming a member, or if you have a question or concern about your technician or Title V position, make sure to contact us. Have a great day.